All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're going to go ahead and do a little bouncing now, and I am going to utilize Easy Player Pro for this. So what I want to do first is go ahead and press the record button, okay? None of these other options matter at this point. All we want to do is buffer the MIDI events, okay? Now, I'm going to go ahead and get into Easy Player Pro. I'm going to go ahead and double-click a variation just to play it through one time. Let's cut the record button off. And then right here, you'll see this display shows us some numbers. This indicates the amount of samples that have just been recorded. Now it's time for us to go ahead and start making some decisions. For example, do we want 24-bit audio files or 16-bit? Well, I'm going to go ahead and stick with 24. Let's go ahead and give the bounce through mixer option a shot. But before we do that, let me go ahead and close it and get into the mixer and just add a couple of effects real quick. I don't even know what this is going to sound like. I'm just doing it for the example. All right. Um, let's see here. Snare bottom. Yeah, we'll go ahead and throw something on there. Splat. All right. And then overheads. Choppy. Okay, so now I want to show you something, though. Because I only have one main output, which is number one and two, I'm only going to have one audio file check it out let's get back into the bounce window let's make sure we have the bounce through mixer option engaged and then let's go ahead and press bounce next we'll be asked where do we want to bounce this to and i'm gonna just choose a desktop i'm gonna just let it lay out all across there press choose and watch it do its thing okay there we go uh-oh little clipping happened so it went ahead and corrected it for us okay so now let's go ahead and check it out and see what it sounds like. Hmm, pretty interesting. All right, so we get the idea. That's kind of crazy, isn't it? <laughs> all right, but those are all the effects that I had on the mixer channel. Let me go ahead and close that out. I'm gonna get rid of all these settings real quick just by going into the default and getting rid of everything. But now you see, by bouncing through the mixer, I only have one output because that's all I'm utilizing in the mixer is just one set of outputs. Now let's go ahead and turn that option off and let's investigate the all bleed on. All right, so let's go ahead and bounce the same thing and then we're gonna be asked the same question once again. Let's press choose and there you go, it's doing its thing. And now we have a whole lot of files to look at. All right, so now let's take a look at what all we have with the All Bleed On option. Okay, there's a lot of different files that have been created. So let's just go ahead and pick a couple of them so you can hear what All Bleed On is going to sound like. Let's go ahead and choose the Kick Wave. All right, you hear those bleeds in there? It's the kick, but then we hear the snare. And the toms also. Okay, so that's what All Bleed On will do for us. Let's go ahead and check out, I don't know, let's do the uh, snare top. Here we go. All right, so that explains it. All Bleed On. And we hear everything coming through. Okay, easy enough. Let's go ahead and cut the All Bleed On option off. All right, and press Bounce. And then here's our window, and we'll go ahead and press choose. All right, so now let's check it out. And right away, you notice there aren't as many files that have been created. So let's go ahead and grab the kick and check it out real quick. Okay, that's just a closed mic. It's an isolated mic channel. All right, makes sense. But now let's go ahead and check out the snare right here. All right, once again, there's no bleed on there. Okay, well, that all makes sense, okay? All bleed on is not engaged, therefore, we're just hearing a closed mic channel. All right, so let's go ahead and check out the split direct from bleeding option. But before we do that, let me go ahead and get back into my mixer and just for this example, we'll go ahead and engage all the bleed for the kick drum in mic, and let's go ahead and engage the bleed for the snare drum top as well. All right, now let's get back into the bounce window, 
and balance it. All right, and now let's check it out. Okay, so here we see kick bleed, and then we see kick close. All right, so let's see what the difference is between this. Let's go ahead and open it up and check it out. That's just the bleed channel from the kick microphone, which is pretty cool if you think about it. Now let's go ahead and check out the kick close mic. All right, there's no bleed on it whatsoever. It's just a straight up kick drum, that's cool. All right, go ahead and close that down. And just for giggles here, let's go ahead and check out the snare top bleed. Cool, that's just the bleed from the snare top mic channel. All right, so let's go ahead and disengage that. So now let's go ahead and check out the split microphone option. But before we do that, I'm going to get another groove that actually has some symbols in it. Okay, so let's go ahead and press our record engage button. And then let's go ahead and get Easy Player Pro going. So now let's cut that off. And now let's go ahead and split the microphone and bounce it and see what happens. All right, so now let's go ahead and check it out and see what we got. Okay, here we have our overhead bleed, crash one, ride four, crash two. Nothing yet. All right, so where's my crash? There it is. All right, so it's just a crash by itself, which is pretty cool. That's what we thought it would be. Let's go ahead and check out another one. All right, so let's go ahead and try, I don't know, let's try the crash one right here. All right, there's my China. <laughs> what happened to my overhead channel? Well, let's see here. Here it is right here, overhead bleed. Let's go ahead and check this one out real quick and see what happens. Oh, okay. It has just the overhead bleed with no symbols in it. That's pretty cool. But there is one other option that I need to show you real quick. Let's go ahead and close this down and get back into our settings tab. And right here, as I mentioned earlier, there's an option to bounce splits stereo files. By engaging it, whenever you bounce something, it will take a file that is typically a stereo file, such as the overheads, and it will split it into a left and right file. Check it out. So we're just going to take the samples that are already recorded and bounce it, and then press choose. All right, and now it's finished up, so let's go ahead and take a look at it real quick. And here you're going to see the overhead, as opposed to being one stereo file, is now OHL, OHR. And let's see what else we got. We got ambient near L, ambient near R. Here's the mid R, mid L, so forth and so on. So you see, it has taken a stereo file and split it into two mono files, a left and a right. Now, this is really handy, especially if you want to go ahead and, you know, send it to somebody in a big studio or whatnot, or if you would like to have a lot of extra control over each side. But still, I thought it would be good just to show you that that option does exist. I hope that I helped you understand this a little better. I appreciate you taking the time to watch it. Now, I want y'all to stick with me because in our next video, we're going to go ahead and have a little bit of fun and create a groove real quick, okay? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in a moment. Bye-bye.